Hey, Liam Ward here at LearnTheHarmonica.com. I put together a beginner harmonica cheat sheet to tell you all the basic information you need to know to get started. I've put a link in the description so you can find the full sheet if you want to have a look and download it. But I'm going to go through each part of it with you now just to get you started. So the first part of the cheat sheet is how to play single notes. These are the basic building blocks of melodies and songs and licks, so it's really important that you work out the way that suits you to produce these. There are three main methods and I'm going to tell you how to do each of them. The first one is pucker or lip purse method. So for this method we're trying to narrow down our mouth to get one single hole. So we want to make sure our mouth is only wide enough that a single note comes out. I'm going to tell you how to do this. The first step is we're going to take the harmonica, put it to our mouth. We're going to aim for hole four blow. You'll probably get that first. Now if you get that sound, the temptation can be to pull off the instrument. Don't do that. Stay on it. And then try and narrow your mouth. Notice how that slight pinch, that subtle narrowing of my mouth is all the difference between a single note and then that chordal sound. It's these cheek muscles that need to be built up and practiced like uh, going to the gym but for your mouth in order to maintain that shape. And if you can keep that harmonica deep in your mouth but narrow your mouth to get a single note then you'll get a really strong pucker shape, you'll get a nice tone and you'll be able to build really nice songs and melodies and licks. So that's the first method and that works for most people. But there's a couple of other methods I want to tell you about. The second is a tongue block. So for a tongue block we want to keep our mouth actually a lot wider. So we're going to play over four holes. We're going to keep our mouth four holes wide. And then I'm going to put my tongue forward and to my left, to the lower notes. So I'm going... to block out holes one, two and three. So it's achieving the same thing, it's just in a different way. Now some people find that this makes more sense to them. One of the advantages of tongue blocking is you can then start to work on other tongue techniques, slapping, octave splits, flutters, that can add a lot of texture and depth to your playing. But it's not for everyone. And then the final technique for getting single notes, which I don't actually ever use in my playing, but I know uh, a lot of people out there like it, is U blocking. So this is only going to be available to you if you can curve your tongue. But if you can do that, then if you place your mouth to the instrument and use your tongue to isolate the note, then you can also get a single note that way. Feels weird to me, and I don't use this method, but U blocking is available if you can curl your tongue. So assuming that you manage to get a clean note with one of those three techniques, then the next thing you'll need to know, and the next thing on my cheat sheet, is how to read tabs. So tab is a form of musical notation that does away with any of the complications of traditional sheet music and just gives you the bare bones. So what tab tells you is the hole on the instrument, the number of the hole that you're aiming for, and also whether you're breathing out or in. We tend to call those blow and draw. So that means that what you'll have written in front of you in the tab just tells you the notes you're aiming for. It's not going to tell you the timing, um, of the notes, how long to hold them and how many rests between them, but it will get you started with which notes to find on the instrument. 
Sadly, there's no universal way of writing tab, but one of the really common ways is the one I use, and simply the positive numbers are blow notes, and the negative or minus numbers are draw notes. So if you see four written, that's a four blow. And if you see minus four, that's a four draw. And it's as simple as that. There are extra things that we can write down in tabs. So for example, bending, we can symbolize that with various symbols. I use forward slashes. So each slash equals a half step or a semitone bend. So if you see one, that means semitone bend. If you see two of them, that means a full tone or two semitones and so on. There are other symbols for various different techniques that you might use your tongue for or different ways of moving between notes. I have put a full tab key in the uh, cheat sheet and you'll see it on the screen now as well that you might find that useful as you progress with your playing. Before we go through the rest of the cheat sheet, if you'd like to give something back, then please click like on this video. That tells YouTube to share it with other people who might enjoy it. And subscribe to my channel for free harmonica lessons every single week. So the rest of the cheat sheet is to do with positions. You're going to find this really useful if you need to know which position is going to be most useful for you in a given context and how to find that position. So the first part is to know what positions are useful for. So I'm going to get the diagram on the screen that I've used in the cheat sheet and we'll go through each one. So a harmonica position is the connection between the key of the harmonica that you are using and then the key of the song that you're playing. So it doesn't matter which key of harmonica you pick up, the numbered position plays the same way because it's about the theoretical relationship. That's why they're so useful. So briefly, I'm going to tell you the most common positions and what they are useful for. So first position is used mainly for simple major scale songs. So nursery rhymes, country tunes, fiddle tunes, um, and it is used in blues, but in the top uh, octave and the bottom octave, not so much in the middle of the harmonica. And that's because naturally it wants to play bright and happy sounding melodies. So, not very uh, bluesy. Second position is the most common position for playing blues music. That's because naturally it would give you the mixolydian mode. That means you've got the flat seven and that's really useful for blues. You can also bend a lot of the notes which sounds really bluesy as well. It can also be used for major keys. You will have to be a bit more careful with selecting the notes as you go. So second might sound like this. Really bluesy. Third position is really popular for minor key melodies. You do have to avoid a couple of notes. The three and the seven draw will cause you problems, but you've naturally got the Dorian mode. So that's close to the minor scale. And that means that if you bend a few notes, you can then get some really nice sounding songs in a minor key, even though the harmonica isn't tuned to play in that minor key naturally. So it's a really clever way of using it. So you might hear people sounding like this. So summertime played in third position. Fourth and fifth positions are both useful ways of playing in minor keys as well. So fourth position is actually our relative minor. So on a C harmonica, you could play in A minor. It's got all the same notes as C major, 
but it, you sound like you're playing in a minor key, so it's really cool for that. Um, especially in the high and the middle registers of the instrument. Fifth position is also used for minor keys, but again, a bit like third position, you have to be careful for certain holes, so draw five and nine might sound a bit dodgy. It's not as common as third or fourth position. And then if you go beyond the sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, then they become not very commonly used. But if we go all the way around to the last possible position, 12th position, that is quite uh, popular. So that's popular for major keys. And it's a good way of playing major sounding melodies, but without it sounding as simple and twee, possibly, as first position. So you do have to do a bit of bending and you have to be a bit careful with certain notes. The three and seven draw can cause problems, but it can be really useful for sounding bright and major and happy. So the last thing that we have on the cheat sheet is a full diagram for every position and every key of harmonica. So let's get that on the screen. So if you look across the top of the table, we can see each position numbered 1 to 12. And if we look down the left-hand column, then we can see the key of the harmonica. So let's assume you need to play a song in the key of G and you want to play it in second position. So it's a blues song, you've decided second position is the best thing to do for that and you want to work out well, which harmonica do I pick up? Well if we find second position on the table and then we go down to G then we can go across to the key of the harmonica, and the key of the harmonica is C. So we pick up a C harmonica. Let's say we wanted to play a song in third position. There's a song in D, and we want to play it in third position. Let's say, for example, it's D minor. So we want to play it in D minor. We go to third position, and we'll find D, and then we go across to the key of harp, and it's C. So again, we'll need our C harmonica. And then I'll just give you one more example. Let's imagine that you want to play in 12th position. So it's a happy sounding melody, but you don't want to play in first position. That sounds too simple. You want to make it a bit more expressive. Let's say we're looking for the key of A. So songs in the key of A and we want to play 12th position. We go to 12th, we go down that column, find A, and then we go across, and the harmonica we'd need is a harmonica in the key of E. We can also use this the other way around. If you know the harmonica you're using and the position you're in, you can work out what key you're playing in. But it's more common that you'd need to work out which harmonica to use because a band or a jam track is in a certain key and you need to pick up the right harmonica. So that's it for the cheat sheet. If you'd like to take a closer look at the diagrams for playing single notes, how to read tabs, or how to understand positions, then check the link in the description to go to the full cheat sheet on my website. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Do click like and subscribe if you have. And if you're interested in taking your playing to the next level, then how about joining my online harmonica school? We're a community of students all over the world all different levels and you can take a free trial today to see if the school is for you. I think you're going to love it but if you don't then you're free to leave before the trial ends and you won't be charged. I hope to see you there soon. Until I see you again, enjoy your practice. Cheers.